I taught myself Chinese from scratch starting at the age of 24. I then went on to get a master's degree from a top five university in the UK in Chinese interpreting and translation, and I ended up in the embassy as the interpreter for the UK ambassador to China. Over those years of learning Chinese, I made an absolute ton of mistakes. And in this video, I'm gonna break down the five big mistakes I made so that you guys don't fall into the same pitfalls that I did. The first big mistake I made was overly prioritizing the HSK exam. Because I was very late to the game in learning Chinese, my focus was on how I could use Chinese to get a career. So I just focused very intensively on the HSK exam. And this isn't necessarily a terrible thing, but what happened was that I overly developed my solo active and passive skills. And by that, I mean my reading and my writing. And I underdeveloped my social passive and active skills like listening and speaking. So I was very, very good if I was in my home study for eight hours a day with a pile of textbooks, I could smash through a lot of morning culture, a lot of mock exams for the HSK and do brilliantly on that. But then when I went out for dinner with Chinese friends, I was not so competent. So if you really want to learn to be a good communicator in Chinese, I would suggest that you don't overly focus on the HSK because this will lead to you becoming what they call in Chinese a shu which means basically a bookworm. You're very book smart, but you don't have the application for social interactions and being able to actually apply what you've learned. Number two, is a point which is related to the first and that was that I spent too much time studying by myself. I would sit at home for often up to eight hours a day studying Chinese, mainly for the HSK exam, as I said. And when I got to postgrad level at university in U the UK, I spent much more time in a communal study setting and this was massively beneficial. It really fed my brain. It really boosted my learning process because you're interacting with Chinese and English speakers and they're also learning from a lot of different sources and speaking to different people and they bring so much more to the table. So rather than just sitting with your pile of textbooks, you're absorbing information from a very wide range of people and their own networks. And it's just a much more colorful, stimulating process. So if you can find some study buddies, people to study with, maybe native speakers or other people who are learning Chinese, this will be much more stimulating for you and will make the process much more fun rather than just locking yourself up in a room and studying with a pile of textbooks and CDs like I did. The third big mistake I made was getting overly obsessed with writing the characters. Now, I was always a bit of a frustrated graphic designer and an artist, and I found writing out the characters massively enjoyable. I found it very meditative and would really get into a flow state by writing out these characters. But what was happening in the process was I was getting a little bit bogged down in the weeds. I was losing the bigger picture of why I was trying to learn Chinese in the first place. So I was spending a disproportionate amount of time on writing the characters because I loved doing that. And I was spending less time on weak areas like perfecting the tones. And I know this is not a common problem because a lot of people are actually put off by writing hands up, but I'm sure some of you watching this will actually really enjoy writing Chinese characters. So I would caution that it can be a little bit counterproductive to your overall progress if you overly obsess and spend a disproportionate amount of time on writing out the characters. The fourth big mistake I made was not learning words and characters by order of relevance or common usage. I would read the newspaper, for example, and my mindset was that I'm really going to master Chinese from top to bottom. So I need to learn every single phrase that comes up anyway. So I'd be studiously writing out every single phrase. And this led to gaps in my knowledge and a kind of skewed understanding of Chinese because I could sit there and talk about Communist Party rhetoric that I had read in the newspaper or talk about the speed of someone's metabolism that I'd read about in a science article. But I couldn't use the correct tones to ask very simple things like pass the vinegar at the dinner table or something like that. So it led to a kind of imbalance in my learning. So I would recommend that you have a very systematic approach approach to learning Chinese from the beginning. Try and learn the characters by order of relevance, by order of common usage. Otherwise, you can end up like me, where you know very arcane, strange characters, and you can even write these characters out. As I said in my previous point, I would obsess over these characters. So I knew how to write lots and lots of fancy, strange characters that didn't come up very often. And yet there were gaps where there were things that I should have known that I didn't because I'd spent so much time on things that were kind of irrelevant. So it's this issue of also getting bogged down in the weeds again. The fifth and final mistake 
mistake I made was related to perfectionism, and in some cases it was too much perfectionism, like I said with the characters, trying to get everything perfect before I would move on to the next stack of flashcards, or in other cases it was a lack of perfectionism, such as with my tones. I had a wrong-headed philosophy around Chinese that I felt, if my tones are just about good enough, then people will understand what I mean anyway from the context, and really they're just being pedantic if they pretend that they can't really understand what I'm saying. It's like I wasn't a true believer in the value of the tonal system, and that undermined my motivation to really perfect the tones when I first started out. So I would say be perfectionist in the right places and don't be perfectionist in the wrong places. What I see with a lot of learners is they get very tied up in knots with the perfectionism about their grammar and how they speak. So they will stop themselves from speaking or they will filter or try to correct themselves in the midst of speaking. And for me, this wasn't really a problem. I was very enthusiastic and especially if I'd had a couple of beers at the dinner table, I would really enjoy holding forth and trying out my Chinese. So this never really limited me, but I have seen it with a lot of people, especially people who are more introverted. They can be very perfectionist about the way they express themselves verbally. So you really want to avoid this. Just try things out, practice what you've learned, and don't try and filter yourself or worry about being perfect, especially with speaking. And in other areas where you do need to be very meticulous, such as with perfecting tones, I recommend that you do put your focus there. Okay, so those are my five big mistakes that I made over the years I was learning Chinese. I hope that's of use to you. Please hit me up in the comments, let me know what you think, and subscribe to the channel and like this video.